Ukraine is going to be good. And uh, I believe uh, uh, yesterday was a really good stream. Uh, I welcome everyone. I just want to uh, ask you before it's going to be too far, uh, check uh, the video and audio if it's uh, okay or not. And let me know, please, in the chat, uh, just to let me know right away uh, if it works or not, if it's connected uh, and you can hear me. Okay, but let me uh, give you some update, uh, uh, you know, on this project. All right, so just uh, look what I've done since yesterday and uh, hopefully you're going to like it. Uh, I'm going to check right now, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Facebook and the Twitch. Let me know if you can see me, if you can uh, hear me okay. All right. Please do. I really appreciate if you can do that. It looks like I'm uh, connected already on a Facebook and that is a good thing. Looks like it's good. I'm connected on a Facebook and I connect it on a YouTube and that is good. Okay, uh, let me know please uh, where you're watching from, what uh, country you're watching from and uh, what is weather like today. Okay, uh, but today's subject is actually uh, really interesting. I am uh, a little behind on uh, answering some questions uh, and one of the questions um, I had uh, you know, uh, it's about uh, uh, sharpening U Wayner. Okay, so it's a sharpening number eleven. So I think it's a good subject, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if you know the difference between uh, gouges, veiners, and chisels, and uh, some other specialty tools. I can little bit uh, explain today. Okay, just let me know if. Um, uh, if it's an interesting subject to you or not, okay? Uh, a lot of people, they actually don't know the difference, okay? What is Vayner and uh, what is Gouge and what is um, uh, 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 the chisel? What's the difference? Especially if you are in um, uh, UK, you, you're supposed to know that, by the way, but uh, I found out that not too many people, even in UK nowadays, uh, know the difference between Vayner and uh, uh, Gouge. Okay, so and there's a big difference. Now there is a, a big difference. Okay, good morning, Richard. Good morning, um, whoever you are, bro. Okay, so you, my brother. Good morning, Paul. Good to see you. Wonderful. Let me check uh, if there's uh, people uh, on uh, Facebook. I think there is. Yeah, but I'm not getting any respond yet uh, but uh, Ben good to see you so how is weather in Michigan today uh, I know I, I used to live in Michigan for a year in Grand Rapids it's like three hours from you uh, it was cold I I you know I, I got uh, <laughs> you know enough of cold in um, in Russia and it gets cold you know like it gets 50 below right so for me Michigan close to Russia. It doesn't get 50 below, but sometimes, sometimes you get, you know, below like three or something like this. Sergio, uh, good to see you. Uh, I didn't see you yesterday. I don't know, you were hiding or you hate me. Or you don't like me anymore. But uh, anyway, welcome, Sergio. Good to see you. Great. Uh, check the quality, please. Uh, uh, how is it streaming today? Is it a full HD or it's uh, just a 720? I would really... Uh, appreciate when you're saying it's cold hey that's Michigan okay although you are southern Michigan you're not supposed to get that cold um, but uh, uh, let me uh, jump actually to the subject today it's actually interesting subject uh, so let me explain a little bit uh, 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 the difference between gouges and veiners and chisels and uh, there's uh, different tools, Stali, shellers, and, uh, you know, grounding tools. I'm not going to touch those, uh, but at least uh, every wood carver should understand the difference. What is the difference between gouges and veiners and uh, uh, chisels? So gouge is not chisel, okay? So gouge is not a chisel. And uh, chisel 
is a chisel and gouge is not the veiner. Veiner is not the gouge. Okay, so what is the difference? Yeah, they are wood carving tools, but they all different. Okay, so let me see. Oh, Sergey, you're watching me on uh, YouTube and uh, uh, Facebook. That is great. And I did not connect uh, Instagram right away. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, Ryan, good to see you. Quality is good. Minnesota, it's uh, like Russia. <laughs> it's, it's cold. It's colder than Michigan. <laughs> it's a, uh, I, I know it was a snow uh, in Michigan just a few days ago. And even in Indiana, Indiana I've got some relatives in Indiana. Uh, it was really cold. But let me jump um, to subject. I really do appreciate uh, if you can comment and uh, let me introduce myself for just uh, those people who don't know who am I. Uh, my name is Alexander uh, Grabovetsky and I am a wood carver. I'm carving pretty much all my life and that's uh, how I make my living, I guess. You know, uh, there was a comment uh, just a few days ago on one of my videos. Uh, uh, I'm not going to mention the name, but uh, the person said, Hey, there's a lot of wood carvers and they trying to teach, but there is no wood carvers who are actually making some money uh, by carving. And the uh, answer to that person, I am the one, okay? I had the decision to make carve or not to carve. I do other woodworking too. I built furniture and uh, uh, I used to build cabinetry. I used to install doors and trim. So well, Finnish carpenter, but the wood carving is actually much better. And yes, you able to make good living actually just the carving wood if you uh, want to. I know some of you are, I should say most of you who's watching me, it's actually just a hobby. It's actually just a hobby for you, right? But anyway, so let me roll intro. <laughs> And uh, if you're watching me on uh, YouTube, uh, please don't forget uh, to like it. It's really important uh, for algorithm right now on YouTube and uh, uh, Google. Uh, subscribe it and hit that bell, okay? Uh, and make sure that all the notifications you're going to get. Uh, really important. If you're watching me on uh, Facebook, uh, same thing. Just uh, like it and share it. I would uh, really appreciate people if you can just uh, uh, sh hit that share button and copy that link and just uh, share it to Facebook and everywhere else. Uh, now, uh, uh, to those people who automatically trying to put dislike, okay, just watch first, at least if you want to hit something. And I don't want to be mean, but if you don't like, just walk away. I don't even know why you do that, okay? So, and uh, I check uh, what country it is, and I can, uh, I'm able actually to check uh, who that person is, but uh, why you do that, I don't know. I mean, it's just an uh, automatic. Uh, trolling i guess uh, don't do that okay just walk away if you don't like it so don't be that you know guy who knows better or know all but let me get uh, uh, i'm gonna read a couple um, uh, comments and uh, see if there's any questions and i'm gonna just uh, roll on uh, uh, with uh, today's subject uh, mean meantime just to look at the work i've done uh, having some updates David, good to see you. Jose, good to see you. Mr. Bahrami, good to see you. Uh, you asking about uh, spoon gouge sharpening. I'll mention it, but today I'm going to talk, talk about uh, uh, veiner. Okay, uh, so veiners. And uh, uh, I'll mention a little bit about spoon gouges and uh, if you wish. Uh, but uh, first of all, I need to explain to you the difference between uh, those gouges and the chisels and veiners, okay? Uh, now, uh, if you look at my screen, okay, uh, it's going to be a little different uh, country to country and place to place, the marking, how they mark, okay? But uh, 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 the main idea, it's still going to be the same. Uh, if you are, uh, let's say, in uh, UK, and if it's a straight gouge, not the gouge, straight chisel, I'm talking about uh, a sweep, okay? 
So, and uh, for those of you who don't know what that sweep is, it's a curvature of a tool, okay? How curved it is. That is a sweep. If it's an absolutely straight sweep, so that is a chisel, all right? So that's called chisel, all right? So those ones are usually marked as a number one. So those ones are chisels, okay? Now, if you are in UK, uh, if you are in UK, so most likely uh, most of the manufacturers uh, there's going to be another chisel it's also going to be straight like that but it's going to be marked number two and that is uh, usually a skew okay uh, and there's a different skew so you can get 22.5 degrees there's a 45 degrees there's a 60 degrees uh, skews and that would be uh, of steel chisels okay so that is a steel chisels all right so that part uh, the second after number two if you are uh, uh, in Europe number two it's not gonna be a uh, straight so in if uh, after that gouges okay and uh, if you are in UK it starts with number three uh, if you are in uh, uh, Germany and the uh, other European countries, it starts with number two. It's already going to have uh, some sweep. So that is number two, pretty much, okay? Number two, and then it's going to go uh, number three, number four, and it's going to go all the way to number nine, okay? And number nine is actually true half round. Okay, those are gouges. And let me tell you uh, how to figure out if it's a gouge or not gouge and why the gouge is uh, different. Uh, I, I'm gonna need the block of wood. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't see that. Oh, right here. I apologize, you didn't see that. That That is my bad. I just got uh, <laughs> my camera wrong. Okay, let me start all over. Okay, let me start all over. So if you look at the top, uh, 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 at the top of a uh, screen uh, so number one would be a straight 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 line it's just a chisel and number two would be also chisel if you in UK and that uh, is a skew okay and a skews they have a different uh, degrees of skewing okay so 22.5 45 and 60 uh, usually uh, uh, 60 degrees I don't see but uh, most likely it's going to be 22 and a half and 45 those are two most common ones uh, if you go to Europe to European countries it's going to be uh, number two it would be already like a sweep okay uh, and it's a slight curvature almost flat there is actually a 2.5 uh, 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 made by Ashley Isles I believe uh, a sweep which is a uh, pretty much uh, between those two guys between number two and between number three okay so and that's going uh, all the way to number nine and number nine it's a true half round true half round if you look at the good number nine at the good number nine and uh, here's uh, an example of good number nine uh, this one is a uh, 20 millimeters number nine and uh, that uh, is actually uh, three quarter of an inch okay number nine but if you look at the sweep of this number nine it is a true half round it's a true half round all right so let me uh, pull a board and just to show you no matter what kind of gouge you have even if it's a true half round or not when you place that gouge on the board and uh, try to create rotation just rotate like this and a good gouge will always, always end up at the same spot. So it's going to create the perfect circle. And I do have a not too good gouges. Uh, they also called the uh, gouge, but it's uh, not too good. Uh, it's mostly antique. Okay, right here's a one. Okay, right here's a one. Uh, it's a good looking one okay don't get me wrong it's a really good looking one and that's antique I got the <laughs> really good deal uh, I was uh, uh, teaching uh, at Mark Adams School of Woodworking 
And uh, I was teaching, I'm, I'm teaching there every year pretty much, and this year I'm gonna be a few times. But uh, one of the guys, uh, he brought the whole bag with old antique tools. Uh, I don't know what's the deal. Uh, uh, he got that on a garage sale. Uh, uh, wood carver died and wife, usually wives, they don't understand the value of those tools. She sold all the tools to this guy for really cheap. And uh, he said, well, uh, you're welcome to get any one of them for free. And I found one, which I really love. I found uh, this one, okay? And that's a really beautiful, really beautiful uh, tool, okay? I can't even know. Uh, it's a, it's a C. Myers, Myers or Myers, whatever you add, uh, so tool. And that's a gouge number nine. Supposedly, I mean, number nine. It should be number nine, all right? They did not mark it uh, the proper way. And the wood carver who carved before, he marked it number 12 and it's not okay so it's a half around but it's not really good one okay because if you try to rotate it's gonna rock see it's just a stepping and that just creates mess so that is a not true gouge the true gouge is supposed to create the perfect round okay and doesn't matter i just showed you number nine but if you would just uh, choose uh, like a uh, number let's say like number six even okay so which is uh, not that well actually let me show you number seven number seven is better okay, okay. right here is the number seven all right so it's a good 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 number seven all right and uh, uh, see it's not half around but if you're gonna place this one on a board and try to rotate it's still I mean Keep an eye. It just is still gonna end up at the same location. That is a really good gouge. So, which is uh, the tool maker knows what he does. Okay, so it's always gonna end up at the same location. Those are gouges. Doesn't matter what kind of sweep you have, you still gonna end up at the same location. So it's a true gouge. Okay, true, true, true gouge. And even if you're gonna pull a huge, really huge gouge like. Uh, I have right here uh, like uh, three inches like 80 millimeters okay it's gonna uh, apply exactly the same if I'm gonna start my uh, rotation okay if I'm gonna start my rotation it's still gonna end up at the same spot so that is a number seven gouge all right uh, what in the world Vayner is all right and uh, Vayner says actually uh, the tools I'm using most of the time uh, on this project, okay? So most of that uh, was developed with Vayners, which is uh, number 11 pretty much. It's a uh, number 11, all right? And uh, in this case, let me show you. This is a uh, number 11 and uh, 15 millimeters, which is uh, 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 5 eighths of an inch. And uh, uh, the difference between Vayner and a gouge, they look the same. They still have the groove and so on. But uh, Vayner, it's a U shape, like a letter, uh, letter U, okay? Just like this, okay? Uh, so, and when you place and create the cut, it's actually a U cut, all right? It's like a letter U. So those are veiners, and they made for the veins of uh, acanthus leaf. They actually designed those tools around the acanthus leaf. And the beautiful thing about veiner, it's actually multi-tool. Okay, you do have a gouge part, which is the bottom part, uh, the curvature, and you do have a like uh, number threes on both sides. Okay. So what you do, I mean, you can create like a multiple cuts. You can create the cut straight like gouge. So you can just do and use it just like a gouge. But let's say if you want to do uh, some um, uh, some really, really, really interesting uh, cuts, like uh, let me show you what, what cut I mean. Okay, hold on just a second. I don't want to hit the wrong button. I don't want to hit the wrong button. But uh, if you want to create uh, a cut, let's say like this, all right? So what you do, okay? So what do you do? So the cut like that cannot be done with the gouge because the gouge gonna cut only straight down. Even if you're gonna rotate, 
it's still not going to create uh, that type of cut. But with this tool, with uh, number 11, which is normally marked number 11 uh, everywhere in the UK and uh, uh, in uh, Europe. So you, what you can do, you can just uh, rotate right when you cut and you actually creating that type of cut. Or even you can just use that as a number three and just to blend, just to use the side of it. And I am showing in my school, uh, and I know some of you part of my school already, and you know on this project, on this particular project, I am using a lots of uh, veiners. Most of the, the time I'm actually grabbing the veiner. But uh, let me go to, uh, uh, to the numbers, okay? How you're supposed to understand those numbers, okay? Let me see. Okay, so like I said, like I said, so number one, number one, it's actually just the uh, chisels. Okay, number two, it's also, but it's a skew chisel. If you are in UK, and that could be skewed uh, both directions, okay. So if you are in Europe, in European countries, so gouges, did I, gouges, start with, <laughs> I still have to learn how to spell, right? Gouges start with the number two, and it already has um, some sweep, okay? If uh, I'm gonna repeat myself, those guys, chisels they don't have any sweep it's actually pretty much really straight line and uh, from number two if you in Europe and if uh, if you in UK it's uh, from number three all the way to number nine it's gonna be uh, gouges okay and after that after that we do have a uh, veiners so veiners it's always like a u-shape all right some manufacturers do really extreme u-shapes and so on and they usually start with the number 11 okay with the number 11. Uh, in uk uh, there's a gouges uh, number 10 okay so you're still able to get some number uh, 10 gouges uh, which is uh, also like a half around pretty much uh, pretty close to number nine uh, in uh, europe so those are veiners and uh, after that, after that, so you do have a, uh, like a V tools, uh, and uh, you can get from number 12, depends on the manufacturer, V tool is just uh, looking like a V, okay? And it's gonna go all the way to number, number 16. Okay, so those are uh, V tools, and you can get from uh, 35 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, uh, 90 degrees V tools and they marked like this uh, then it would be a specialty tool uh, uh, like between you between you and the V it's like a number 17 okay number 17 and there's a more specialty tools like a 19 uh, sheller okay number 19 shellers and so on and so on specialty tools I hope it makes sense Okay, hope it makes sense. Uh, let me know if it makes sense. Please uh, comment below if uh, you like that idea. Uh, okay, let me read the, some of the comments. All right. And uh, Stephen, hello. Good to see you. Okay, you have a one millimeter. Uh, well, macaroni tool is not the veiner. Okay, macaroni is different. Uh, let me show, you know, well, actually, you know, I'm not going to show it today maybe sometimes because i'm going to be distracted macaroni is different there is a uh, two specialty tools made for furniture makers macaroni and the fluteroni okay macaroni actually um now let me see i believe it's number 24 uh, number uh, 24 and the uh, macaroni uh, l uh, look like uh, uh like this okay so I'm talking about the profile. So that is macaroni. Although it's not really 90 degrees, it's actually a little uh, sloped like this. And the fluteroni, uh, uh, it's a really similar, but it actually has a more pronounced, uh, like a making for the, uh, it's actually for the flutes. Okay, it's uh, for furniture makers. Okay, and I believe it's number 24. 
for uh, if it's a file, okay? So that is a macaroni tool. And there's more. I mean, the, there's a lots of different specialty tools, lots of different uh, specialty tools. Um, Eugene, thank you very much for you saying that is interesting. But what I, uh, I want to show you today, what I want to show you today, I mentioned a couple times already uh, not expensive, uh, really economical brand, uh, which is um, Shaaf. Okay, those tools are really inexpensive. And uh, uh, for example, I've got uh, multiple sets of Shaaf tools. And this particular one, uh, it's a full size. It's actually equal to file almost. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you can judge as much as you want to uh, how they finished, you know, what the hole is inside. But tool is a tool. Are we talking about like $95 for the whole set? It's not that expensive at all. And I tried them, okay? Uh, it's not like uh, I'm... Uh, uh, first of all, I'm not making any money on that, okay? So you should understand. So he doesn't pay me. I mean, the guy who owns... Uh, yes, we do communicate right now. Uh, but uh, no, I'm not getting any commission on that. Uh, I'm just uh, thinking about a lot of people, uh, they buy those tools. And I, I saw when uh, you Google right now on Amazon, uh, carving tools, uh, Shaaf is actually popping pretty much result number one because of the price, of course, because of the price. But same like uh, all of the tools, uh, when you buy a new tool, uh, it doesn't have a proper bevel, okay? So it doesn't have a proper bevel. So it's a really high and I already tried to explain when you're trying to carve. Uh, so it's supposed to be when you place your hand underneath, uh, like uh, touching by knuckles your workpiece you're supposed to already grab the material and in this case it's not it's just the rising on the heel and the heel of course uh, is uh, this part it's called the uh, heel okay now so when I get uh, brand new tools when I get brand new tools I'm always 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 uh, doing a stage number one and I am uh, reshaping to a much lower bevel how about uh, Indonesian chisels, sir? Indonesian chisels, uh, Bros F7 carving. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it depends where you, in, in Indonesia, there's a different types of Indonesian uh, gouges and chisels, okay? Uh, the biggest the difference between European design and uh, uh, those uh, Far East countries, it's a handle, okay? A lot of Indonesian chisels, they don't have a handle, which is also okay, uh, uh, you know, if you're just uh, using that with the mallet, uh, and they're using actually with the axe a lot of times, just uh, using a, a small hatchet and uh, use that. Uh, but as far as the sweeps, uh, they mark in it's differently, of course, uh, but uh, most of the people in the world, uh, they buy uh, European, uh, European looking gouges and chisels. Okay, but let me uh, let me get uh, to my uh, process how I do that. Of course, of course, I mean, uh, the easiest process would be uh, if you don't have any machinery just to take a block, uh, whatever uh, you're using, uh, I'm talking about uh, sharpening system, stone or something. And uh, in this case, it's a really small uh, CBN uh, uh, diamond stone. And uh, uh, but I have a big one and this is a small one and this is a 600 of course I have to use a little more aggressive and you start you know shaping just to take out your heel okay so that's the way you start you just uh, follow the curvature okay and then just whatever the the grid is higher than what you used previously so just continue but the thing is, it just it takes really, really long time. And the problem uh, I have with uh, sharpening by hand, nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's nothing wrong with that. So sharpening by hand done by hundreds of years and thousands of years. But uh, I'm in production. And uh, uh, a couple challenges I have, I had, I should say, uh, with the sharpening by hand. I have a lot of tools, okay? I have like a half a thousand gouges and veiners and chisels. And uh, it, it takes sometimes to reshape hours, you know, uh, a tool like that, uh, because they all pretty much coming with the wrong bevel. I mean, I shouldn't say wrong bevel. 
Uh, it all depends. It's wrong for carving. It's not really wrong. It all depends what type of carving you do. If you're doing a hardwood carving, you know, uh, you want to get a little higher bevel because you're using with the mallet, okay? But uh, my approach, my uh, my way of doing it, I like machine, okay? I like machine um, sharpening. And of course, uh, you probably, some of you already know, uh, my favorite, my favorite machine is a work sharp. It's a shame they don't sell it in Europe anymore. But you can actually uh, uh, do something like that yourself. Just to get a, a grinder, uh, just normal grinder, just to buy. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be like a one horsepower or, uh, you know, higher. I mean, I would just get like a half a horse because uh, you really don't need that speed. You don't need that uh, uh, torque and so on. And uh, let's say you've got the grinder, and especially if you've got uh, um, a small version of it, what you do, you just flip it, okay? Flip it and build the box around and uh, get the wheels, which is uh, what I'm using. Uh, I'm using glass, of course, and uh, I, I, I stick sandpaper sold by Workshop, but you can just uh, get 10 millimeter MDF, okay? 10 millimeter MDF just to cut it, get the hole, and uh, use that also with uh, attachment of um, uh, Tormac grinder attachment, okay? So, uh, Steven got on eBay. That is actually a good place to check. I mean, on eBay, you can get actually older version, which is, by the way, older version is better than newer one. I have a, a generation one and it has a metal body. And the beautiful thing about it, let me show that to you, okay? The beautiful thing about this, it's a metal body and uh, I can actually get my light. See, this is a, well, actually, I need to, I, I already uh, wired that. But the light, what I'm using, uh, it's a small LED light and it's actually sticks, it's magnetic. And uh, I can see much better, okay? Uh, so that is the older version. If you can get on eBay, that is good. Uh, also, uh, why I like this machine, the older version, it still has a ability to accept the bar. But, but if it doesn't, okay, if it doesn't, the newer ones, they, they don't have that anymore. Uh, please, uh, uh, that is absolutely okay. Okay, that is absolutely okay. So what you can get, what you can get, you can actually get uh, Tormac bar attachment, okay? It does come just the two metal parts. It comes with this part and it comes with that part, okay? And, uh, 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 this piece, it's actually a dovetailed piece. I just uh, was setting up one of my dovetail machines and I, I had that in the garage and uh, I used that uh, as, uh, you know, to hold those metal parts of this. But uh, the beautiful thing about it, so what you can do, you can pretty much place it by any machine, okay? And uh, what you do, you just uh, clamp it. You clamp it close to the machine and you're still able to use that with the Tormac jigs all right so and i love tormac jigs they are really brilliant guys and you can still use a flat surface without grinding like a hollow grind uh, and they use the same jigs and you can take away you know that thing and just to use on another machine if you wish so it's actually even better to you know just to get uh, uh, that attachment and by the way uh, before uh, uh, this live stream I've got uh, some links um, below, okay? Uh, in description, I've got some links to uh, my favorite uh, jigs, what I'm gonna use today, and uh, this uh, little thing. I, I know they, <laughs> that is the problem. When I mentioned that uh, to, when I'm teaching in, in school, uh, in person, uh, you know, they flying out from the stores. So uh, I checked today. I believe there's only one left pretty much. So if you want to buy it, buy it now. Uh, there's a link below, okay? So so that is a good thing. Not not cheap, but it's a really, really stable, okay? Really stable. And you don't have to do the dovetailed piece. You can just get a two by four or two by six piece, just a normal block of wood. Although it's a little too soft because it's pine. I would just use probably ochre, maybe maple, okay? 
but anyway, so buy it. Uh, uh, again, when I'm saying one left, it's uh, one left in U uh, United States. So you have to check in Europe. But uh, let me show the, the process uh, how I work with um, uh, Vayner. Okay, I really like um, uh, those two guys. It's a, it's a jigs. I also placed the links below. It's a SVG. Uh, it's by Tormac to go to <laughs> jigs. It's how I call it. Go to jigs. Okay. This one is a SVG. Uh, uh, in my case, it's a 35, but newer version is uh, actually uh, 38. And uh, uh, you know what's the difference between uh, 35 and 38? Still, I mean, I still can't figure this out, okay? Still, uh, it, it's the same thing, just the name is different. Uh, also, I have an older version of uh, this guy. Uh, I also placed uh, a link below. I, I believe it's uh, uh, SVG 50, if I'm, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But uh, the thing with the, the Tormac, it's made in Europe. That's what I like about it, okay? Uh, so it's not going to be uh, disappearing from a uh, market. I, 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 I don't know what the number, but I think it's SVG 50. Forgot it. But anyway, so just uh, uh, links below, just get it. But the way I use it, okay, the way I use it. Let's say I get uh, uh, a new Vayner, which is in this case, it's a shaft number 11 and 3 millimeters. Okay, shaft number 11, and it's a U-shaped gouge not the gouge of course it's a vayner okay so uh, and uh, the way i commission it okay a couple ways you could use uh, this jig and just to place it and make sure uh, there's a cavity and this cavity goes uh, to the side of the handle all right and uh, get my screw in place i also always check I always check uh, uh, you know if it's a straight or not okay so it's really important for me and uh, you take it pretty much to the machine whatever the machine you prefer and uh, in this case I really love uh, my machine and oh by the way I have to mention to you so I have to mention to you I promised a couple weeks ago that I'm gonna show you uh, different uh, thing for that machine so uh, cbn wheels okay and yes i've got uh, the, it's a diamond wheels for the sharpening on the workshop so i've got really like a 80 grit and 180 grit uh, 1200 and 800 and uh, there's another one but i don't need it all i need is just to pretty much uh, those two guys okay uh, it's a alternative uh, to a sandpaper but I really like that alternative, okay? Uh, so, and uh, let me get uh, like a 80 grit first. 80 grit first CBN wheel. Never use water on CBN wheels. Never do that. I know some guys and some wood carvers do, uh, but it's a big mistake. So, but uh, when you're doing um, uh, commissioning, reshaping it, so what you do, what you do, you actually placing and they're just they're trying to find uh, you trying to find can you see what I'm showing to you or not uh, can you see my machine right now or not can you let me know please okay because I don't know if it's showing or not for some reason it doesn't look like uh, it's changing a picture okay let me know if you see uh, okay uh, I, i'm gonna continue you let me know if you see or not uh, my uh, machine right now you can't see you see my just the piece huh okay i see i apologize right here so now you see that right so you can see um uh my work sharp uh, 3000 close to the tormac and this is a go-to machine all right uh this is go-to machine so i i use a uh, grid number 80 and if i'm using this jig so SVG 38, so you placing and just to find whatever the position of, uh, uh, you know, the bevel is and you adjust uh, accordingly, 
me see you you can see my bar for some reason okay you adjust your bar I mean this thing uh, accordingly actually to the height pull it a little farther and maybe you'll be able to see a little better or, or the opposite direction like this my apologies that you can see can you see that now better yes but anyway so you adjust that bar and uh, you place your tool on that bar and until you hit whatever the bevel you're supposed to have whatever the bevel you're supposed to have okay let me adjust the camera first i'm gonna uh, switch to my piece and i'm gonna just readjust uh, a little bit the camera okay for you can uh, understand much better what i'm doing do you like that subject so far Great. Okay, I readjusted the camera and uh, you should be able to see much better now. So you should be able to see much better. That is a bar I'm going to use and that's an old, older version. So you just adjust whatever the bevel you want to do, which in my case, it's uh, usually like at 22 degrees or so, even lower. I, I really like the uh, really low. And uh, uh, that is one approach. But uh, I really like um, uh, another jig better actually for some cases uh, is uh, this one. Okay, this guy, it's really adjustable and on my school site, I'm actually explaining uh, how to sharpen a fingernail gouge, uh, fingernail uh, nail gouge and I use this one. And actually this one is also used uh, for the same operation. It's also used for the same operation. Okay, so let me do that. Okay, I'm going to show you. It's exactly the same idea. You are placing the tool inside, but the handle, the handle is going to be on the side of uh, whatever the long thing here is, you know, the tail. Yes, can I say tail? Tighten your screw <laughs> and then got to check. And what you do, bar, and uh, in this case, I need to readjust much lower, much lower. And this is number 11, by the way. And uh, you remember, number 11 is not the same as a gouge. And let me readjust. And I got it. Make it tight. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. Don't measure anything. And this is a 80 grit. And I love this machine because it's a slow and it's not burning okay it's not burning my metal okay but the thing is uh, about this machine uh, so you you treat this tool same like a v-tool so you understand on the sides of this tool it's like a uh, number three gouges on both sides and the bottom part of it it's like a, just like a number nine gouge okay but you still just to follow the tool okay what you do just to start carefully well actually i need to get away and let me show you what happened okay in just one second so see it's actually already the metal is taken out and that's pretty quickly uh, I usually go really close but not too close approximately 164th of an inch away uh, from the edge because uh, the metal consistency is not always there uh, until I just change the uh, you know the grid but um, see how quickly it works super 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 quickly all right and again I'm gonna continue And I got to check because it just is fast. I just got paid right now. A couple hours at least. Here you go. And that's already there. Let me show that to you. It is already there. I'm really, really, really close to the edge. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't get bigger. 
but I'm approximately 164th of an inch, 164th of an inch. And I did not press an all. It took me, took me literally, literally, you know, just uh, like a few seconds. Okay. Now I'm ready to change the grid. And uh, I can actually uh, pretty much jump right away. I mean, I could use uh, 180, but I don't need to. I don't need to. You'll see uh, all it's going to take uh, right now. It's a uh, 800 grit. That's what I'm going to use. 800. Okay. Let me show that to you. It is just a 800 grit right here. All right. So 800 grit. So let me attach it. Let me attach it. And we'll take out uh, whatever the tool marks are there. Okay, to change change the grid, it just takes the second actually, really quickly. And uh, sometimes I'm using a, a candlestick to just uh, wax it. Uh, I didn't use it right now, but uh, you know it can be some friction right there. So, but uh, with the wax, it uh, helps a lot. Oh, uh, before I go farther, please understand rotation. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rotate away from myself, but you also have to understand the uh, speed of this rotation. Uh, closer to outside you get, it's going to be a lot more aggressive. Uh, closer to inside you get, it's going to be a lot aggressive. I mean, less aggressive. So it all depends uh, uh, what result you want to achieve. If you want to be more aggressive, just go on outside and just uh, work your way in. If you want to be less aggressive, go on the uh, inside and work your way in. But also, please understand uh, the older version. See the movement? Uh, when you press, when you press on this one, when you are sharpening, means you're changing bevel, okay, uh, of uh, your carving tool. Higher you get, uh, higher bevel gonna be, okay? Lower you get, you pressing on it, it's gonna be much lower, okay? So just uh, try to be at the same position or take advantage. Uh, take a lot of uh, material uh, uh, with the lower bevel and if you just wanna get closer to the edge just to get higher because again, you know, that fluctuation, you just take advantage of it. And it's gonna, it's a slightly gonna change bevel but it's gonna hit just the edge, okay? And that's pretty much it. I don't have any tool marks left. No tool marks. All right. And maybe I was just too quick. I got too close uh, to the edge. But there's no tool marks left. I mean, from a previous grid. And after that, after that, so I'm working usually uh, inside. So after this, I'm usually working inside a uh, uh, micro bevel, which is uh, always, always good idea to do. And there's a few different approaches you can use. Uh, uh, translucent, uh, I like uh, uh, Arkansas uh, stones. And uh, I, will, uh, I will list the uh, links. I forgot to list the links. But uh, I like them because it's, a, first of all, it's a, a soft. You can reshape whatever the shape you want to do. And uh, translucent, it's the second one I'm using uh, a lot. Okay, uh, you can use with the oil or without. It's, I, I you know, I use that uh, both ways with the oil and without the oil, and it works just fine. And I get my inner bevel, okay, with the soft first, and then translucent, all right and get my bevel in until I feel burr, which in this case I already there. So I've got the burr or wire edge. Uh, so second, uh, uh, you know, you can use a ceramic stones, okay? Uh, the same way, I mean, there's a, uh, I can place a link. This, in this case, uh, I believe it's, uh, what's the, what's the brand? Can't even read, it's too dark. Spiderco incorporation it's a usa based uh, company but i like those because they last a long time 
those are ceramic ones, okay? And uh, you can do that. But now, since I do have a, a micro bevel already established, I do have a burr. I do have a burr. Oh, please comment uh, in uh, uh, in the chat if you like it or not. Give me a thumbs up, please. Uh, okay, I really appreciate if it's interesting even or not. So if it is, give me a thumbs up. If it's not, you know, just leave, <laughs> right? But anyway, so next step, next step would be, it would be uh, just a pretty much buff it or strop it. I should say strop it. And I know some of you don't like it. And I did uh, on a stropping, especially on a stropping, um, uh, what is the best strop of a couple weeks? Well, actually, last week I did, uh, you know, what is the best strops and a paste. But I really like, uh, you know, work sharp and leather uh, glued on a wheel. And it's actually sold like that. And I also placed the link below and a green paste and it's already there by Koch okay but any paste will do so but now I don't need to use a jig okay because uh, you understand thickness of uh, leather versus uh, thickness of the sandpaper if you're using just the normal wheels uh, with uh, uh, sandpaper which is uh, I'm using all the time uh, it's different so leather is actually makes it higher so it's changed bevel so and pretty much you just have to do it by hand that is the one method if you're using leather uh, for the buffing not the buffing but the uh, stropping or if you're really afraid of uh, wire edge so you could use uh, abrasive uh, they do have a honing abrasive i also placed the links below description i mean in description uh, uh those honing which is uh let me show that to you if i can find it ah, my computer well no i found it so which is uh, actually just uh, a sandpaper glued on top of a glass wheel and uh, yes you can buy uh, separately those uh, glass wheels uh, uh, and i also got the links below and that's a 3600 3600 and a 6000 grit which is uh, just a sandpaper pretty much and uh, what you do you just use that as a ladder if you wish if you're really afraid of uh, wire edge if you're really afraid of wire edge and in this case by the way i could use a jig i could use a jig i usually like uh, uh, to buff it but uh, it's actually uh, not everyone likes to do but I do I really like it okay I really like it uh, again I'm not afraid of uh, rounding effect and all as long as my tool carves really sharply and I'm using blue ta uh, blue paste uh, on a felt wheel and yes I will provide the links uh, for the felt also I forgot I guess And you just buff it, okay? Almost no pressure. Let me check. So literally, it just takes uh, two seconds. Two seconds and the tool is uh, really sharp, okay? Well, not two seconds, two minutes without the talking, all right? See, it's absolutely sharp tool. For me, it's a... Uh, go to method i mean i can use uh, sides as a number three and again this is not expensive uh, it's not expensive uh, uh, brand in all but uh, see how nicely how nicely it's actually reshapen okay resharpened what, what i mean what should i say i don't know what i just did i just actually reshape the tool <laughs> okay so regrinds it recommissioned i would say right now it's a proper 
bevel and now I can just uh, carve uh, with the proper bevel. All right. So please, if you do have a questions about it, ask me right now and we're going to finish really quickly and I'm going to read right now some of the questions. Steven saying, uh, do you ever use those slotted side wheels where you sharpen from the beneath on the work sharp? Uh, question is great. I never use those because it's maybe it's a good idea for um, uh, uh, some straight chisels when you look down and you see actually what is going on. But you have to hold it by hand. And uh, uh, I found when you're sharpening by hand, you're still rocking your tool. You're just rising like this and you create a really rounded effect, which is a Sergio afraid of. All right. So I don't use those. I do have it. Okay. I do have that uh, slotted wheel. But uh, to be honest with you, my opinion, it's not necessary in all. Uh, if you have an attachment like I have uh, from a Tormac uh, bar, so you really don't need to. Okay. Let me see if there's any other questions. Igor Shumar, спасибо большое. Okay. Спасибо большое. All right. So we're. Ben is saying, where can I get uh, the green and the blue diamond compound? Uh, that is a, a problem. Okay, that is the problem. Let me uh, let me switch to my machine right now. And maybe I'm going to be able to actually pull some of the questions. Pull some of the questions. And that question was this one. All right. So that question was this one. I'm not sure if it's going to show or not. But anyway, so uh, uh, Ben, uh, my apologies that I'm using Koch, okay? Koch paste, uh, blue and uh, green. Uh, and in the United States, it shows it's unavailable anymore in the big, big chunks. Czech Woodcraft, uh, maybe local Woodcraft still have it. But don't, uh, don't, um, get that idea it's the only paste you can use uh, any paste pretty much uh, lately i really love uh, I, I tried them um, and i'm not sure if i have that on the bench or not um, i don't it's uh, behind my computer but anyway uh, i really like uh, uh, the green paste uh, by beavercraft i tried that it's a little more aggressive uh, but i really love the idea okay and uh, here you go now it's trying to pull uh, questions it's trying to pull some questions all right so i really like that um, uh, beavercraft uh, and i also got uh, uh, i also got uh, uh, link below to uh, not in this one but i'm gonna do it uh, uh, later after i finish uh, streaming i'm gonna do that but anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I've got an hour already. And uh, if I want to uh, get that video and post somewhere else, uh, uh, it takes only up to hour. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And I'll see you next time. All right. Have a good one.